I keep saying that eventually these companies will be forced to get rid of politics through simple economic concerns. And today, I am here to show you CNN, a company that is being forced to get rid of politics through simple economic concerns. <laughs> as ever, Arch is right. And as ever, Arch has said that this is going to take a very, very long time, as these companies are ginormous. And, okay, here's one of the interesting things as well. This is something that a lot of people don't necessarily know, but is very common within major industries. A lot of these companies, uh, Kotaku, Eurogamer, CNN potentially eventually, uh, many of these companies actually run at enormous deficits. Corporations can run at massive losses for years and years and years and years and years and years and, years and survive through loans, through credit, through buyouts, etc. Etc. And this is what has happened to a lot of the mainstream gaming publications. But I'm wondering a bit off topic here. CNN quietly disbands race and equality teams as part of layoffs. CNN quietly disbands its race and equality team of reporters as a part of a major restructuring that includes firing 100 staff this week, according to a report. So, the um, race and equality team, I believe this was established back in 2020, when CNN created a team that were dedicated to talk specifically about race, from a communist perspective, of course, because it's CNN, done. And this clearly did not manage to create quite the influx in numbers that CNN was looking for. And <laughs> with the recent Trump debate, <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel as if CNN might be looking at the orange man as the messiah yet again, the savior of ratings. But again, we are wandering somewhat off topic here. So this was clearly a part of CNN's wider attempt to bring their politics into the mainstream and to chase that wider audience that they were reassured was totally out there. We, um, we talked about this with the Acolyte for a little while ago, how the Acolyte was in many ways Disney's all-in gamble on the wider diverse audience, where they accepted all of their premises, they bent the knee in every way they could conceive, uh, conceive of, and did everything that the HR department said they should do to appeal to this enormous audience of progressives out there. This phantom audience that they have been desperately trying to replace Star Wars fans with. Well, CNN, like most progressive companies, they too believed that the silent majority was on their side, and if they could just bend over backwards enough, they would eventually show up in the ratings. Ah, uh, well, turns out that wasn't really the case here. Now, I will hasten to point out, by the way, that apparently CNN, that was not the button I went just to click on, a CNN themselves actually do deny this. A CNA spokesperson has denied that the Associated Press deal would lead to job cuts, as uh, this is the thing here that they are being bought up or combined with the Associated Press, combined probably more correctly. Uh, this being done by this lad right here. Now, Mark Thompson has an interesting track record, including this. The BBC was biased against Thatcher, admits Mark Thompson. So, Mark Thompson here, which is the same guy, CNN chairman Mark Thompson, recently announced a restructuring network result in layoffs of 100 workers. He has been in media for a very long time, including the BBC, including the BBC during some of its most uh, stormy periods, shall we say, and it is unclear how heavily involved he was in a lot of the BBC's greatest scandals. But he did come out later on in 2010 to state that the BBC was being politically biased. Now, the very fact that he worked for the BBC and did not stop or change this is not exactly a glowing mark in his record. The fact that he then decides to move into CNN also suggests that he probably didn't have too much of a problem with aforementioned bias, but at the same time, I would imagine that he is probably a capitalist first and foremost. And so when he sees a department of like a hundred people that are simply not earning their keep, well, he might choose to get rid of that department over simple economical concerns rather than politics. As 
again, in defense of the idea of the progressive economy here, right? If you are making the assumption that there is a large silent majority out there. In fact, the vast majority of the population are progressives. That's your worldview, right? And you are being told that you have catered to the smaller audience, that your uh, your news coverage, your broadcasts, etc., are taking up, like, just, just slicing off a small portion of this enormous whole. Well, it might very well be worth it to dedicate a few years or even a decade or so in seeing if you can reach that wider audience. Because at the end of the day, as I always keep saying, politics is the 2% arguing of the 98. And it was, it appeared for all intents and purposes, as if the left wing was winning. The early days of the culture war, the right didn't even know it was fighting. It took us a solid five or six years before we realized that the castle was actually under siege at all. So um, I don't necessarily blame organizations and, you know, billionaires, which I'm assuming this guy probably is, or millionaires or whatever, to try and jump upon what appeared to be the winning horse. But um, it didn't shake out that way, of course. That's the big deal here. For all intents and purposes, the team is not a team anymore. As the network's spokesperson first claimed the race and equality team was not disbanding, before admitting to Lewis that it will no longer exist as a mission-oriented unit. So this might kind of refer to the, um, you know, the, the, the wording here, because of course, right now, if you're going through a merge or a buyout or anything, you're going to need to make sure that Nobody feels scared, you know, that, that they don't feel as if the things that they are merging with or buying out will be losing out in value. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's no layouts going on, nothing bad is happening, it's just, um, <clears throat> restructurings. And it wouldn't certainly make sense. Uh, going on to refer to the team that assigned to different areas so that their perspective and work is brought into all or our types of programming. It is not a unit in the way it was before, but race and equality is still very much still their focus. So this too is going to continue for quite some time, where the companies will continue to pay lip service to the idea that they are continuing with this ideology, because bear you in mind, the left is still in power in the institutions. It has not since suddenly been routed or anything just because they can no longer pay the bills so companies can go okay um you know we, we had a we had a race and equality team and they were focusing on well um this basically and we've reorganized it now to to bring their valuable perspectives to um the printing room yes where they operate the printing machinery giving the printing workers a real taste of what actual socialism is like as the haughty journalists are brought down to the floor to make ink with the rest of everybody else. And it's going to happen at Disney, it's going to happen at all of these corporations where they will be restructuring. They'll still commit themselves to the idea, hiccup, at least in public, whilst in private they will begin reversing it in the same way that it took a very long time for the companies to actually reach the point where the idea of crazy creating a race and equality team was palatable. All of this begins in the quiet and in the secret long before it reaches the ears of the public. Because of course they have gotta make sure that it's palatable to everyone inside first. You've gotta purge the correct people. You've gotta stack the direct, uh, the de English deck the correct way. In essence, it's kind of like playing Crusader Kings 3, just way less interesting. Or you've got to bribe the HR lady to make sure that your preferred political perspective is reflected in the new hiring pool, if you get my general drift here. Still, I find this again rather interesting. We now have a company like CNN taking a very clear and absolutely observably real step away from the ideology to which they have been so thoroughly and absolutely devoted. That does not mean that CNN is in any way redeemed. It doesn't even mean that they might ever become redeemable. It is simply another shift in the tides that uh, we should look at and take a little bit of pleasure in. 
a little bit of schadenfreude satisfaction in the fact that we have managed to shift the cultural currents enough to the point where major corporations are seeing it and beginning to react. So uh, take this day to give yourself a quick little pat on the back. You've made CNN get rid of their active racism department. <laughs> if that isn't worth celebrating, I don't know what is. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.